Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the 30-minute Breeze Incident Analyst version 2.0 demonstration. My name is Yamna Mozam, and I'm joined here by my colleagues, Kejua Jing and Yinqing Liu. To give you an outline of what we'll be discussing today, Dr. Jing will give you an, a brief overview of Breeze Incident Analyst and the updates that are included in the recent Incident Analyst 2.0 release. And following that, Ms. Liu will go over a couple of example cases to demonstrate how the new features and enhancements can be utilized. We will wrap up the presentation by providing you with some information on how to update your software to the latest version. And at the very end, we will be happy to answer any questions you may have. A few things we want to point out before we begin. All the information presented today, including the slides and um, the release notes, will be emailed to you so that you may have those for your reference. For any questions that we don't get to during the demo, we'll include answers to in the email. Also, since we're limited to 30 minutes for the demonstration, all the attendees are muted currently. So if you have any questions, um, please put them in the questions section in the GoToWebinar panel. And uh, feel free to add any questions here during the demonstration. And then at the end, we will answer any questions that may come in. I will also put in the release notes in the handout section. So you can go ahead and download them from there if you need that. And um, we will also send those to you. So with that, I will pass on the presentation to Dr. Jing. Hello, everyone. As Yamna mentioned, I will be uh, providing an overview of the update in Breeze Incident Analyst 2.0. I will begin with a general overview of the software and its capabilities. Then I will dive in some of the key updates in Breeze Incident Analyst 2.0. So, what is uh, Incident Analyst? The purpose of the software is to provide a tool for emergency response and planning, and modeling the effects of accidental chemical releases. It can be used for operators' own knowledge of their facilities, as well as for regulatory purposes. In United States, besides US EPA's IMPCOM and ALOHA, incident analysts serve as a refined tool for consequence modeling of worst case and alternative case required by risk management plan. Uh, the three primary hazards which the software evaluates are vapor dispersion, fire thermal radiation, and explosion overpressure. Move to the software's uh, capability. First capability of the software is a vapor dispersion model. It evaluates toxicity or flammability of contaminated air by modeling the downwind movement and disposing of a chemical cloud. Uh, multiple models in incident analysis provide a wide range of choices for a buoyant gas and dense gas, including two-phase mixture. A second capability is fire modeling. It evaluates the Thermal radiation caused by a liquid pool fire, either confined or unconfined, by a jet fire, either pipe leak, rupture, or flare, and by a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion. The last capability is the uh, explosion modeling. It evaluates the blast overpressure caused by vapor cloud explosion. The explosion model in incident analysis include simple TNT equivalency, equivalency uh, methods and more complex TNO multi-energy methods and baker strevlo tongue methods. For all this modeling, a BIA uh, brief incident analysis adds the ability to compute the endpoint distance to the hazard level of concern. Uh, for example, a 20 ppm of ammonia, a 5 kilowatt per square meter for thermal radiation, and 1 psi for overpressure. 
So, uh, what's new in uh, Breeze Incident Analyst 2.0? Avoiding 2.0 updates source term wizard calculation method to generate time varied emission rates for gas release, liquid release, and poor evaporation. It uses more modern methods to improve the realism of source strength estimation. For example, for tank release, the liquid re release rate decreases with the drop of the liquid level, and the gas release rate decreases with the loss of pressure. Volume 2.0 adds the, add the capability to model a leak through a pipe connected to a tank in the uh, a source term wizard. Uh, depending on the pipe length between the exit point and tank, methods are applied to compute the release mass flux rate. The coding of this method into the uh, software has been validated against the example cases in available iteration. The development team also creates different scenarios in spreadsheet, which then are used for coding validation purpose. As for the system enhancement, an incident analyst 2.0 displays time varying source strength calculated by source term wizard in both graphical and tabular formats. Users can use the average emission rate for the first minute recommended by the software to simplify their modeling. They can manually import the overall maximum emission rate for conservative purpose, or they can use the time varied emission rate in decades for realism purpose. Version 2.0 enhances uh, the chemical database by adding new chemical properties for poor evaporation models, which allows the soft term wizard to compute the liquid pool growth and time varying evaporation rate. Lastly, a volume 2.0 enhances the slab model to allow users to specify the time step used for calculating and concentrations at user defined discrete receptors and viewing the time varying concentrations at a specific location of entry. Conclusion of this section uh, Incident Analyst 2.0 updates uh, source term method. All the methods are from published literature. Users can go into this. Uh, literature and get a better understanding of what uh, incident analyst source term wizard does. Volume 2.0 as a refined tool uh, to US EPA's INTCOM and Aloha, it gives users the opportunity uh, to choose between conservative and realism. Uh, you can download the uh, complete release notes um, for the handout. And you can also uh, download the release notes uh, posted in free software website. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass the ball to uh, Yin Qin Liu, uh, who will give a live demonstration of Incident Analyst Volume 2.0. Thank you, Yin Qin Hi everyone, uh, this is Inting of Trinity Consultants. Welcome to our webinar. Yes, so today I'm going to show you an incident analyst example that models a chlorine release scenario. The software model in 3D uh, in incident analyst first uh, calculates spill rates of the liquid chlorine coming out from a tank. And then it calculates evaporation rates of the liquid pool formed by the spilled chlorine. And with this output from the source term model, we'll then use SLAB, a dense gas dispersion model, to estimate the threat zone of this accident. For this demo, uh, the threat zone is defined based on chlorine's ERPG levels. And uh, here they are, like a level 1, 1 ppm, level 2, 3 ppm, level 3, 20 ppm. 
and uh, uh, so these three uh, chlorine EPRPG levels are used as level of concerns for dispersion modeling. The concentration averaging period is 60 minutes. Like uh, the height of interest is set at 1.5 meters. Uh, since I have already entered the release condition into the source term wizard, I can use this feature, edit an existing source to bring out my source. And then uh, you will see the setup here. This is a release from a tank. And the tank's total volume is about two, cu two cubic meters. Chlorine is stored as liquid and so there's no dike around the tank. The ground temperature is this one. It's set at the ambient air temperature, which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. This ground temperature is needed to calculate the evaporation pools, uh, evaporation rate. The temperature of chlorine stored in the tank is this, like uh, it's uh, chlorine's normal boiling temperature. The, and the storage, the uh, tank is in atmospheric pressure. Liquid chlorine fills the tank at 85% of the tank total volume. So based on this uh, storage condition, an uh, instant analyst calculates how much of the chlorine is stored in the tank. And here it is, it's about 2,600 kilograms. Now uh, comes to the release characteristics. So we assume there's a hole on the wall of the tank. The hole, its diameter is one inch and it is a half meter above the bottom of the tank. And I also selected this option, compute duration based on the storage quantity and emission rate. When this option is selected, the source term model will estimate how long the liquid spill will last. Now let's take a look at the result. So this is the table of the summary of a source term calculation. And the first one here, so the source term calculation gives us the Richardson number for this release. The Richardson number here is 380, and this is the dense gas release. Since it's dense gas release, we'll use slab or DAGDIS for dispersion modeling part. The storage uh, mass quantity, that's the, like a total chlorine in the tank is about 26 kilo, kilograms. And here is the evaporated quantity is about 2000 kilograms. This total evaporated quantity is equal to the total spilled quantity because liquid below the hole doesn't come out from the tank. So after the spill ends, there's still some remaining chlorine in the tank. That's why this total spilled quantity is smaller than the total uh, chlorine stored in the tank. The emission rate from container. This emission rate from container is 2.72 kilograms per second. This, this emission rate means liquid spill rate. It is the average uh, spill rate of the first minute of the release. Because liquid in the tank, it, uh, the level of the liquid in the tank goes lower and lower. And, and lower. So the liquid spill rate actually is not a constant. It becomes smaller and smaller. And in the previous version of instant analyst, like source term model only calculated the maximum instantaneous spill rate. But since version 2.0, like source term model now calculates the time varied spill rate. And then here this number is the maximum one minute average spill rate. And here, this output is maximum, maximum evaporation rate, uh, which is here is 0 0.84 kilograms per second. This number is not an average uh, evaporation rate. It is the maximum instantaneous evaporation rate. So after the liquid spill starts, 
the liquid accumulates on the ground, so the pool size becomes bigger, and so does the evaporation rate. There is usually a lag in time between when the liquid spill starts and when the evaporation rate reaches to its peak. This uh, pool area is 61 square meters. This is the pool size associated with the maximum evaporation rate. That's the summary of a uh, source term uh, calculation output. Let's uh, take a look at the time varied emission strength output. So with th this is the new feature in this 3D analyst version 2.0. Here we have a table and we have a chart to show how uh, release changes by time. On this table, like uh, we see four parameters here on the on the table. One is time steps, and then here is emission rate. This is emission rate of the liquid spill. And here is the evaporation rate of the liquid pool. And here is the pool radius. We can see that the liquid spill rate becomes smaller and smaller. And in the meantime, because liquid spill rate here is always at the beginning of the spill is much bigger than the evaporation rate here. So um, liquid will accumulate on the ground, the pool becomes bigger and bigger, and so as the evaporation rate to a point. Here at the end of this table, we see um, at this moment, the liquid spill ends. So this is, this time step is 1280, about 1,280 seconds. It's about 20 minutes after the spill start, then like the liquid spill ends. On this chart, so we see two curves. These two curves are drawn based on uh, the data we see just so from this uh, table. The blue line in here, th this one, represent the uh, the liquid spill uh, rate and the yellow line represent the evaporation rate. Like uh, these are the like uh, they, these two lines show the change of liquid spill rate and change of evaporation rate in a graphical way. Before we go on to the dispersion modeling part, I'd like to show you something else from the short term calculation. Now I just jump to the yeah to the end to the result part in uh, directly. Here usually when we model an ac accident, we need to know the release rate and also we need to know how long the release actually lasts. Uh, then we have two outputs actually uh, for that purpose. So one here is used dur uh, release duration. This used du release duration is 732 seconds. This number is associated with liquid spill. And it is calculated like this. Let me show you the, yeah, the equation used. So the used release duration is calculated by total spilled quantity and divided by the maximum one minute averaging spill rate. And for this case, it's about 2,000 kilograms divided by 2.71 kilograms per second. That gives us this 700, 732 seconds. We use this number, like here, this number. So this, or if we still remember, like uh, from the time varied emission rate table, we saw a liquid spill duration is 1,280 seconds, but that, uh, that number is different from this one. So like in dispersion model, if we use the maximum one minute average spill rate then as a modeled emission rate, then we want to use this 732 seconds as the release duration, just to make sure the modeled total amount of released chemical is the actual released chemical. So if we use a time period like 1280 
seconds as our release time will overestimate the actual chemical re released by this accident. Now, this number here, calculated evaporation rate, this number is given for the same reason. And this number is calculated as here, the total spilled quantity divided by the maximum evaporating rate. And uh, if we still remember, like a total quantity about 2,000 kilograms, evapor maximum evaporation rate is 0 0.8403. That gave us like a 2,300 seconds. Yes, so again, this calculated duration is not how long the evaporation has actually lasted before the dispersion modeling. But for the dispersion modeling purpose, we want to use this, uh, this number as our release time. Otherwise, we'll overestimate the total amount that evaporated. And now uh, let's take a look at the dispersion modeling part. After source term model calculation, uh, incident analyst will set up a dispersion model for us automatically. For this uh, release, it's dense gas release. That's why like a slab is used here. In this example, like a, a liquid pool is formed. So the release source is an evaporating pool. And the finite duration, this number, for about 40 minutes, this is the calculated evaporation duration, as we just talked about. And here, the e emission rate uh, is the maximum e evaporation rate. The source area is the pool area. Here, so this, this, and here, all these input numbers actually we discussed in, from the source term calculation output. For this model, I also set up a few uh, discrete receptors, and then I can use this option and specify calculation time interval for discrete receptors. When this option is selected, the slab model will output concentrations at the defined time series for, di for the discrete receptors. So we can run the model and take a look at the the result. Okay, so it takes us to this slab summary file. At the first part of the summary file, we see like a model input, like a mat conditions, chemical and the chemical properties, the release condition, and then the uh, level of concerns like we have set up. And here is the model result summary. And these are the maximum distance to the three concentration threshold levels we have specified. Like uh, here, this this one. So the one ppm concentration level appears at the maximum distance at about 19 kilo, uh, kilometers. And three ppm concentration appears at the maximum distance is 16 kilometers. And for 20 ppm, and the maximum distance that says that concentration is about 5.4 5 kilometers. Here is a graphical rendering uh, of the concentration against the elapsed time at discrete receptors. Each discrete receptor will have one chart like this. And here's the drop down list, and we can choose different discrete receptors from here. And on this chart, the, the x axis represents time lapsed, and the y is concentration. There are three colored lines showing the level of concerns the red, yellow, and blue. It's squeezed because the like a concentration level is very low here. So this receptor is at 500 meters from the source, and its concentration um, get as high as 400 ppm, and then eventually drop down to one under one ppm. Uh, let's take a look at another receptor. 
this receptor, like uh, I, yeah, so they they said uh, presumably is at a school, and this at this receptor, the concentration goes up as about 24 ppm at one point, and eventually drops down to under one ppm. If at the time about um, say 8,000 seconds, that's about two hours after the release. So I want to share you with the tip on the discrete receptor setup. Here on this chart, the title part, it has the receptor's ID and the receptor's description. This to help us know which receptor is showing here. And because receptor ID is really hard to remember, so that's why I add some descriptions to the to the receptor and set up. That's why like we can see those here, for example, like a, uh, this receptor, it has a description of 500 meters. Uh, like this receptor, like I put in like a school A um, to, to it. So now you know, like this is why we see 500 meters or school A in the title, in the titles of the chart. This is just my way to help me to remember like uh, which, re which receptor I'm looking at. And finally, I think we can take a look at how 3D analysts show the model result graphically. Here on the map tab, like uh, the very first uh, contour we see, this, there are three circles here, and they show the maximum distance of the three concentration levels, like this, um, this is level 20 ppm, and then 3 ppm, and then like 1 ppm. Then we can also, like uh, here, we can also go through each time step, like uh, here, and then see how the concentration contour move and develop. Like uh, at the beginning of the um, release, and then as time goes, like uh, the concentration uh, contours move further uh, and further away from the from the source, and eventually it move out of the our like uh, level of concern zone. So this concludes my demo of today. And I, before I finish, I'd like to mention one more thing here. And uh, like we have also implemented a few more enhancements to instant analyst since the recent release of version 2.0. So this new version with this enhancement was posted on our website yesterday. I'd like to encourage you to go to the website and get this latest version. And in that way, you can take advantage of the improvement in this new one. And thank you, everyone. And now I'm passing back the control to Yamna. Okay, um, so with that, we'll, uh, I'll just quickly wrap up the presentation with some uh, update information. And before I go to that, if you, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to write those down in the questions panel and we will get to it as soon um, as I'm done uh, with the updates. So to, as uh, my, uh, Edwin Ching mentioned that the new, update is available in your MyBreeze account. So to update uh, your software to the latest version 2.0, you can simply log into your MyBreeze account on, and download the software. Before downloading the software, uh, remember to uninstall the software that is currently on your computer. And then um, just as a note, you will not lose any previously saved work. In case you have, um, expired maintenance, you can uh, feel free to contact us and we will help you update your maintenance. With updated maintenance, you do get access to the latest version of the software or any other versions that are released in the next year um, from your date of expiration. And then also you will get access to the support team. So feel free to give us a, um, give us a call or send us an email and we will be happy to help you. So with that, um, let's just see if there are any questions that come in. 
And um, you can also raise your hand and we will um, take those questions, unmute you and take your questions. Um, and we'll just take a minute here to see that. And just to remind you that I will send all your questions and the presentation and the slides to you as soon as uh, uh, either later today or early Monday morning so you have that. And in case you do have any other questions later, feel free to, again, get in touch with us and we can help you with um, answering your questions. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. So um, let's, uh, we'll wrap up the presentation here. And um, thank you for taking out the ta time in your day to participate in this demonstration. We hope you enjoy the rest of the day and have a great weekend and we will um, talk to you soon. Bye.